Hey there, this is Clayton. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different today. I want to share a video with you that's a little bit unorthodox. Of course, there are a lot of unorthodox videos on Facebook, so this, I guess this would fit right in. I don't talk a lot on stage. I don't share a lot on stage, mainly because there's not enough time. We have to get the songs in that we need to sing, and people don't like a lot of talking, if you will. So, never really shared my story. And there's a lot of people out there that that know me as Clayton Inman, yes, but they don't know me, or nor the, do they know my background, even before I began singing in '83 with the Singing Americans. So, if you'll indulge me, I grew up listening to the Gospel Singing Jubilee, which I thought that was the most incredible show on TV at the time. I was a kid. And man, the, the Florida Boys, the Hensons, the Happy Goodman family, the inspirations, I was just blown away by the four-part harmony. I thought the songs were the coolest. And their hair, man, everyone's hair was like perfect. I thought it was pretty amazing. I grew up, grew up watching that show. And I also grew up singing in youth choir in junior high and even high school youth choir. And, that was a lot of fun too. I had the opportunity to sing with my family, the Inmans. So music has really been my life, if you will. I got the opportunity to lead music at a church, three-day revival, uh, in small town, small town of Mississippi, Boonville, Mississippi. The evangelist was John Bramlett. Now, you might not know who John Bramlett uh, was, but uh, he was an ex-football player. You can Google him. He's an ex-football player, played years ago for maybe the, the Dolphins or Patriots, but he was a ball brawler. I mean, he could clear a, ball, a bar out, but he got saved and became an evangelist and an amazing one at that. Well, he was preaching the revival that I was leading the music at in this small church. Uh, sweet people there at that church, sweet people. Well, the first night went exactly the way it was supposed to go, exactly the way the bulletin said it was supposed to go. <laughs> the second night, man, uh, he finished preaching and uh, even during the, the sermon, man, I felt such a conviction on my life because I just, I realized that, man, I had not received Christ. I've never, I've never been saved, never accepted him. I didn't have a relationship with him. But here I was leading music at a three-day revival. There, there's, there laid my dilemma. I mean, do I sit here with this conviction and hope it goes away? Or do I go down and embarrass myself in front of all these people who are looking to me to be spiritual? Uh, man, pride, pride can be good because I'm proud of a lot of different things, but pride can be a killer. Pride, can, if, if pride separates you from Christ, it will kill you. Um, I, I finally made a decision that night to get saved, to accept Christ. And I just want to pass along to you, if for, I don't care what your status is, I don't care if you're a big wig in a community, a, I don't care if you have a, a, a big uh, position in a church, if you're a Sunday school teacher, music minister, a pastor, I don't know, whatever you are, man, if there's something wrong, if you've never accepted Christ, that you're afraid to let people know about that, if you're afraid to, to make that decision because of where you are, do not let pride dictate your decision. Pride will kill you. Do not let pride. Do not let pride separate you from a relationship with Jesus Christ. See you.